Bitcoin is here in potential massive, massive trouble. And I'm going to show you the indicator that is signaling here a potential major sell off or dump for a Bitcoin. And we're also going to talk a little bit about some news that have just happened. So if you think that's interesting, then definitely stick around here. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. You're liking this video, also activating the bell so that you will never miss out on these important updates. And now let's directly start off uh, this show with some news. So I'm not getting too much into it, but everybody knows already uh, about it. BitBoy, uh, Ben Armstrong, yesterday got arrested. I was actually watching by falling asleep uh, in my bed the live stream and saw how everything unfolded um, until the moment they turned off the live stream and um, I think at that point they arrested him. I still don't know for what reason they arrested him. Uh, I can only think about... Um, one scenario where they kind of said hey you showed up with a weapon <laughs> to the to the guy's house that stole your lambo so there is a, there's a problem you know so um and that might be the reason that then uh, carlos came and said hey this guy is now threatening me to kill me or whatever you know and that's why they took him for a couple of hours into um custody until they figured out that everything is fine he is out again um and posting again on on twitter so um yeah that was uh quite entertaining uh to say um the least uh, but that's that's that so let's uh, get now into the reason why i believe that bitcoin is in major trouble and the trouble comes from the dxy from the dollar index because the dxy is having now a golden cross which normally is a signal for further upside momentum for um the DXY and that would be really really bad so for now the daily candle that we are seeing is moving to the downside but Bitcoin is not really reacting to it uh, I would see definitely uh, I would love to see more downside here but for now because we broke such a key level it is more likely that in the imminent short term we only would see a retest and the bounce back higher to potentially 107.60 points and from there, I expect definitely then a bigger rejection back to the downside and that would then put relief on Bitcoin and Bitcoin would start rallying from that point onwards. So now when we're looking at the Bitcoin price itself, if we're looking here at liquidation levels, there we see something contradicting in my opinion. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that here on the four hourly chart on Bybit. So here all these lines again, these are liquidation levels and smart money is hunting liquidation levels to grab liquidity and of course making a, a profit in the process. One big zone that caught my interest is now here, this, this box here. In this box, when you look here um, on the table, you see that in orange, for example, here are 100x leverage shorts that would get liquidated if the price reaches that level. And in yellow, you have 50x level shorts if we are reaching that level. So that whole zone here is a big liquidity grab uh, for a market maker if they push the price now in the range of $26,600 all the way up to $27,500-ish if they would push it all the way up there. So I'm, and I... Uh, from what the chart is telling me, that would also make the most sense to first drive it up and then you have all these low leverage positions and then drive it down to liquidate the other high leverage long positions and then come back into range. So it would make sense for a market maker, uh, it would make a lot of sense for a market maker to play it that way instead of sending it first down and then up. So why would, would I as a market maker not do that? Really simple, only by drawing here this box, you see that the upper box is bigger than the underlying one. So even if I adjust this a little bit, you, you still see that the underlying box is almost half the size of the upper one with all these liquidation levels above. So yeah, yeah. So you see there's way more liquidity up here to be taken than to the downside. And that's why I believe that we could see first a push to the, down, uh, to the upside, which will catch a lot of people off guard because from the price structure, it looks like that we will continue to go lower. And let me show you why. 
So we have, first of all, here this downward sloping trend line that we are failing to break now for quite a while now. Another color. So you can clearly see every time when we came to this trend line, uh, we got rejected from it. So this downwards trend line is right now um, a force to be reckoned with uh, when it comes um, to resistance levels. So and this trend line has first to be, to be broken. And I can really imagine that we could see one pump to the upside and one big candle liquidating everybody and come straight back down, liquidating everybody to the downside and go back into range. So be prepared for that. Once you see the slightest sign of that downward sloping trend line to be broken around $26,300, $400, get ready that we might see a squeeze to the upside to liquidate all these shorts that are in that zone up here. And then we're going to see uh, another hunt for all the high leverage longs down here also when we're looking here on this daily chart uh, here again it would i still believe that from the way the price action is shaping that it makes sense that we come at least one more time down here to tap into that uh, demand area and push then back up but that like i just said um, that does not mean that we cannot see first a small push up here and then we go back down and come back up. So that is something that I uh, also wanted to point out. So how would I be trading this? I would be trading this, like I said, I would get in around $26,400 with a tight stop loss and trade this really all the way up to the top of that zone here. So that will give me a risk to reward ratio of 1 to 5, which is absolutely fine, 3.6% more or less for the profit and only 0.7% uh, for a stop loss. So if I trade this with 20x, I can make here uh, roughly 80% to the upside and I have a downside risk of 14% uh, um, on my position. So that is how I would be trading that. Guys, don't forget there is a trading competition coming up on BitGet. I will have a dedicated Discord server for that competition. So definitely make sure that you are signing up here with that specific link. Uh, go then to Futures Competition, search for AMC winners for the team and join the team to be part of that competition. You have only four days left to sign up for that competition. Afterwards, the competition is starting. And also don't forget, you need to have at least $400, uh, $300 in your trading account uh, to be eligible for that trading competition. Otherwise, if you want to trade, do this on Bybit, you still get $30,000 if you sign up uh, with my specific link here. And also, I cannot preach it enough, guys. If you want to step up your game in trading and you want to learn from scratch, uh, then my course and mentorship program is definitely for you here under my homepage, amcrypto.us. So now when we're looking here on this four hourly chart with all these imbalances here, you I give you another reason why I believe that a move to the upside is more logical than a move to the downside first. And that is because we have now some imbalances above us that are closer to us than the bigger one beneath. So these three imbalances here, they're way easier to clean than trying to push the price all the way down first to this one here. And that's why it makes more sense to first push the price up, catch everybody that wants to go long, especially if we break here some key levels, and then turn this into a fake out and push this to the downside. Here on, on the daily chart, you can also still clearly see that we have here this downward sloping trend line. Um, we did not get close to it the last, yeah, almost a week now uh, to that trend line. Here, what I can imagine is that I don't really believe that we're going to see another flush here, a real quick flush to this dash trend line. I, again, uh, from price action unfolding here also on, on the daily chart, it looks like that we're going to see here a turnaround 
to the upside and a move higher from here before we then get uh, pushed to the downside. Here was something else that I wanted to show you guys. Ah, here. That was here on this one hourly chart. Uh, that was the chart that I wanted. So for this to be happening, Bitcoin has to do two things, which might be quite difficult right now. We're under the Monday open, under the weekly open and under the daily open price, which is really, really bad for Bitcoin because that normally means that we have further downside. Uh, if Bitcoin is able to manage at least to reclaim the weekly open by today, then we can definitely um, get a little bit more excited for this potential upwards move that I was speaking about. And something else that I saw here while I was looking at the price action that we have here potentially a lower low and a higher low in that uh, um, yeah local structure. And that would also then indicate that we should see a move to the upside. So the initial move to the upside would be on the one hourly chart to $26,400, as I said. But then we would have formed a W pattern. And the W pattern would have a technical target of, so that's now just a roughly estimate, of 27000 yeah, roughly $27,000 to the upside. So get ready for that potential uh, trade here. If you see Bitcoin pushing to $26,400, you should uh, be preparing yourself for further upside. So I'm not saying that we go straight to $27,000 once it is happening. Um, if we see a push to $26,400, most likely we're going to see a small retracement and then we see some, um, hopefully some follow through to the upside. Guys, that's it already for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and I'll see you then again tomorrow.